takes us on a field trip to um, pick up a 1960, 59 or 60 Zenith 23 inch console. It had a picture showing it powered up. So the CRT uh, looks bright enough to produce a picture. It's a 23, I believe, CXP4. Uh, the price is right, free, and uh, we brought the tester just in case. We just stopped to get some go go juice here, and the coffee here is 99 cents. 99 cents any size coffee that's fine but here in this state the tax is um, six and a quarter percent so 99 percent or most including McDonald's establishments when they charge 99 cents for something they charge you a dollar six that's six and a quarter percent they round up but this uh, particular one because we're at a, a little, little bit of the backwoods they didn't round up it was a dollar five Dollar five for ninety nine cents. So that's six cents. So they didn't charge you the quarter of percent where everyone else rounds up the penny and takes your three quarters of a penny. Because you can't pay with a quarter of a penny, I suppose. And that's just a rant on the tax. Yeah, there's not a lot out here which is what I like. On our right there, that large body of water is the Quabbin Reservoir that feeds Boston most of its water they have an underground water main so to speak a tunnel that delivers all the water well probably about 70 miles into the city of Boston This is downtown Northampton, Massachusetts. Kind of an art, art district. pedestrians. I believe this is our street right here. So here we are. We've got um, this is the the Super H20 chassis here. That's the one from the ad. And over here we have its predecessor, which is an early uh, a smaller porthole zenith. With some, looks like some. A little bit of, I always did that, a little nicotine at the top perhaps, who knows. But uh, yeah, not too big. And uh, it still has the, um, still has the factory cord wrap on it. So we'll get these on the truck and uh, get them on their way. Keep collecting these TVs, we're gonna to need to build something like that. Oh, there are probably 20 minutes of daylight left here, actually. Uh, yeah, about that. We'll pass the reservoir entrance again.
wood stoves. We'll check our load in a few moments and uh, we'll pick up some kindling ourselves. Beautiful downtown wear. I'm always followed through this town. It's freaking every time I come through. Scenes. Actually, the station is just up that street, anyhow. Load looks good other than the blanket coming off the top. I did hear a noise, meaning this slid back a little bit, see? So maybe we'll reposition that. We got a pallet from Lowe's and a couple bags of pellets. There are some free items over there. I'm gonna take a look at one of those heaters. Truck of wood. I have this heater. From the 80s, a bow camp. I have the heater, but what I'm here for, the base, I don't have the base for ours. It's one of those quartz heaters. Works quite well. And this looks like a dehumidifier of some sort, which I'm not interested in. We'll take this for the base. They work quite well. Ours is in better condition though. This is from on or about 1982. So we've resecured our load here. Zenith is on wheels. And the heater, this is what I'm talking about. Let me zoom out a little here. It's the base that's missing from ours, so uh, we'll keep this one as a spare, and that's just a regular quarter 20 mount. And you can't get these lamps anymore, so we'll keep this thing aside. And onward we go. It's already approaching sunset. And like I've shown with the GPS before, when it's officially sunset, which is about oh, four, four, it's before 420, display automatically, that's how you know it's sundown, the display will automatically go to night mode on its own. And then you know it's sundown. Looks like we'll be gathering our sticks and twigs in the dark here. But that's alright, I know just where we're going for that. Again, I don't know when daylight ends, but uh, I want to catch the screen changing to Nighttime sunset. It's 417, so should do it just about any minute. Oh, I am saying any second miles right. That display should change. Sunset. I just turned around a minute to get a look at some of the wildlife here. A few horses. Oh, we have this one right here.
should go into. What you doing? What's your name? I know, you're camera shy. You want to say hi? I know. you. I think you're a boy. Yes, you want to go play with your friends over there, I bet, huh? Okay, we'll see you all later. Bye. Okay, before it goes and gets too dark, we'll just go down this little connecting road here. Just pick up some of these dead branches over here. I thought I saw some earlier, so. Let's gather up a few sticks and be on our way. Our bag of twigs. The reason I do this now is because a month from now there'll be snow on the ground. We won't be able to do this. And it's misting out a little. It's raining. Raining on our goods. Get these back to home base. Cover them okay, up. Here we are back at home base. It's pitch dark out. We have zenith number one over here. We'll call it. Unscathed, all complete, okay? Zenith number one. And over here is, is zenith number two. Now I want to show you something. When I was carrying this in, I had to do it uh, myself here. So I don't know if these were new nicks because I did tap the cabinet a couple times. I don't know if those are new. Oh, that one might be new right there. Um, not serious, but in case I, you, some viewers may already know this, some may not show you what I'm going to do. Okay, one thing I've done, and I, uh, as much as hate to admit it, and maybe others have, and maybe some of you know this, but what I, what you can do if you do ding some of your furniture or wood, I'm just going to take some water, and let me get some light over here. And this isn't the perfect, this isn't perfect conditions here. But I'm just, if you just dab, Actually, if you could hold a sponge with some water up to that, dip it in some water. I don't know if we did that or not, but it is a little bump. So if you if you could hold that there, uh, the wood like a sponge will recover and you won't even know that that is there. If you could hold that, I bring the light up against it and just hold that there which I'll do the um, in a few moments that that uh, that little bump won't be there anymore and you're just really gonna take something it's hard to do one-handed hold that there the light isn't quite tall enough to hold that you get the idea it's dark hold that there goes my water of course Hold that against there and check it in a few minutes. Okay, we have our pellets going in the stove, and although we don't need it in here, here's our bow cam. And I've gone ahead and attached the the base to ours, which doesn't have any pitting or rust or anything. And what you do is you just turn it on and try low. You can see our voltage drops to 115 here. In the outlet it's on. Oops, uh, let's kill the lights I'm here. I'm going to crank this up a little bit, but there we go. We have a, our stand for our boat camp heater. Uh, these lamps were known to explode or something like that, I guess. I don't know. I'm not certain. But uh, we have a spare. I, I haven't tried the other one. Maybe we'll bring that one in and try it. Let's turn this off. And there you have it. Okay, and here's boat camp number two. Like I said, it's a little rusty down at the bottom. still has its original cord. I'll turn this one on and see what it does. Line voltage is 120. Turn it to low. 
and we're still at 120 C so this one I don't think is working which is why it was free Sounds like, it feels like the thermostat on this one is not working properly. And I feel no heat. No heat, no current draw. So, the stand was worth it. And I gave the knob a little whack and of course it came loose here. But uh, I gave it a whack to see if the voltage went down on the meter over there. But this is the thermostat in this, I'm almost certain. Okay, well there you have it. Let's go back out and check okay, that zenith. Out on our zenith. It's a little better. Uh, but if you just keep some water on there again, this will this will swell right back out to where it was. And I do believe this is where we hit it with the other set. So thanks for watching. This, like I say, this should bulge back out. I'm not too worried about it. Put a little stain on it. I won't even know it's there. So this one was the uh, second one we didn't even know was part of the uh, part of the original. The Zenith porthole and that's only like a 12 inch size screen. Thanks for watching. And that's virtually unde undetectable almost. You can still feel it but it will come right back out. Oh, and much to my dismay, I believe there's a brightener there on this CRT. I don't know the model of this set, but it has a brightener on it. And I see no chassis identification. If anyone out there has a clue, feel free. I, I, I'm sure I'll be able to find it once we get the back off. And here's the picture uh, of the ad of the TV, uh, so we know that's what it looks like when it's on. Curiosity is getting the best of me, though. I have to go out and look at the round one because I'll, I'll, I'll almost bet that that CRT from a previous video that I did at the auction, a round 16-inch CRT, brand new rebuild that I passed up on, probably fits that Zenith out there. I the was able one. to find the ad on the old uh, Zenith, but I can't tell whether that nick we put in it was from us or not. But uh, at least we have something to go by. And that's it with the doors open. Actually, back at the first picture, I don't know if you can see that, but right right there, there is that little nick in the door, so um, that may have been there prior. Well, this is kind of strange, but someone did add this piece of wood here as a brace. It's been there a long time, but uh, anyhow, if we have the back off, let's get a look inside. That tube is a 12. 12UP4A or 12LP4A, which I think is in very high demand. Um, it's an old set. This is a chassis 23G24Z1. Okay, let's have a look around. We have our antenna. The brightener is strung by a string, hung by a string. This is an old set. It has the old Zenith lettering. I'll give this 1949-ish. has an antenna running on the inside of the cabinet up there. That is a metal tube. Very clean inside. Very nice cord. Polarized plug. Okay, well, we have the CRT number. That's all we wanted off this was the 12UP4. That has a brightener on it. Is that the original tube? It must be. Well, I'm gonna guess it is. I don't see anything on it. Metal tube. Okay, now we can call this a, a wrap. Got the Zenith black and white. TV. And that wind out there is not letting up. What's our uh, output tube here? Is a oh, 6BG6? 
guessing. Okay, thanks okay, for since watching. Our TV day isn't done yet today. We have to pick this up. The woman's only going to be there for a few hours tonight. They're not home tomorrow. So the reason I want this is I don't think I can zoom in there to see that, but it has the channel indicator here, which I cracked on mine by putting too big of a knob on and trying to close the door. There's no TV in this, so I'm going to fetch it for the ring here around the channel selector. So here we go again. This one's not too far away. Just a couple towns. Here we are the next day with this cabinet and uh, it still has the speaker in it. But I went out to the front of the house and I saw this on the grass next to the front stairs. We have a little box opening here. This was just a lot of parts that were offered for sale and I don't know what any of them are. They're odd coils and, and whatnot. But I went by the numbers. The 112s seems to be what I'm looking for is this drum. I'm looking for, I'll show I'm you. I'm looking for a drum for the CTC 15 right there. The channel indicator so does I'll not know it if I see it. I have no cross reference. I don't have the factory service manual. So I have no idea what this drum looks like. It could be for a newer model. It could be. I just, I don't have any idea. But I do know that they're called drums. any channel numbers on it but I believe this is the drum this is a guess is this a drum for the CTC 15 I believe it is my te the teeth on that one are all broken not that we're going to be going through the channels much but uh, it'd be nice to have it working properly so that was a decent find there's one other drum in here. This one says channel indicator. I don't know what that is. Resistors. Okay, they're just a ton of factory parts. Channel indicator. So we have a model that this goes to also. So that's it for the box opening. The parts in here are octal sockets and resistors and whatnot. Well, there you have it. That was the uh, catch of today. Oh, it does come with the numbers. No, it just comes with the locking ring down there. Getting confused. So there you have it. Put him back in the box. Bring him over by the uh, CTC 50. Okay, here yeah, they are in there. I wouldn't say final resting spot, but uh, for this uh, time and place. This is the Zenith again. The first television I have with high fidelity, both bass and treble, two 6x9s and uh, two electrostatic speakers which rebuilding those can be a joy I'm told as the, uh, the foam inside them is what deteriorates. Um, uh, the door here is I don't want to, I really don't want to mess with it. It just opens like so, okay. We did not test the CRT yet but um, it did display a picture, so I'm not too worried about it. It's kind of an oddball tube. I don't see many of these 21, uh, I forget the number offhand. Uh, next is the, this is the porthole with the metal cone CRT. And this one too, we almost lost a, uh, almost lost one of the knobs here. It was rolling inside the door, it caught it. So we have all the, uh, all the knobs there. This one may play a picture. We, we simply don't know. It's our last on channel 11.